uh, fifth fifth topic, fifth lesson of the course, and that is about loops, looping structures in the Python programming language. Now, um, if you remember back to last week where, where we talked about conditional statements, so basically the if else uh, structures, how to make some sort of uh, logic for your program. So conditional statements are those program st structures that you can use to alter the sequence of execution. So you have multiple uh, multiple lines of code, but you only want to execute some of them depending a bit on uh, some predetermined uh, conditions. And that's of course what you can do with the with the if if else statements. Now this condition conditional uh, could be well all kinds of stuff. Uh, usually it some has to do with uh, user input. And um, Usually the condition needs to be somewhat deterministic, as in it's, it's predictable, you can guess that something something might happen. And um, here's the really uh, simplified example where uh, we ask for user in input using well input. And then we compare what this uh, what, what, what the user typed in to some preset condition like right, right here as in, as in this example of, of checking a password for a for a program so a little bit a uh, little word on program structures uh, generally so basically all uh, sane programming languages that exist work pretty much the same way so the individual building blocks of a programming language uh, pretty much can be deconstructed to a few different elements and those few elements are basically variables and data types, input output, uh, conditional statements, repetitions, uh, functions, objects, abstract and compound data types. And looking at have pretty much covered uh, B already. And um, today's agenda uh, is basically on these repetition statements, and then there is uh, only a, only a few building blocks left. So this is uh, the, why why we are uh, covering the course material in the order that we are covering it in. So there is a very good reason as to why these are the topics that we cover. It's because they are the same in all programming lang languages. The idea, of course, here being that if you have ever programmed using some other language, you're going to be able to see what the uh, different things, uh, how they work, particularly in Python. Or programmed in any language before, then uh, you can look at this, uh, get a reference uh, as to how stuff works in Python. And if you move on to some other language later on, you're going to be able to see that indeed these are the, the building blocks that programming languages usually usually comprise of. So it's kind of an, an important uh, to consider this uh, a, a little bit. OK, so um, yeah, we have already covered most of these. Um, and for and for good re reason, and now we're uh, at this step, which is repetition. So let's uh, recap from last week. The game that we had, the number guessing game, and um, if I just get my notes out of the way from here. So this, how this number guessing game worked basically. Uh, we have some user input and depending on what you guess, this guess is either either uh, going to be correct or incorrect, right? So if we were to look at this uh, code from somewhere, 
uh, last week. Um, let's see if I can if I can pull it up um, here from last week's demos. Okay, here is the number guessing game. Right here. I'm just going to move it to another file for this week's stuff. Here we are. Right. So, as a recap of how this number guessing game worked, uh, well, if we run this. So, it's basically going to, on this line, be asking us for some input, and that input should be a number. And uh, depending on how good we are at guessing, we are either going to get a, a result of like in, an incorrect number, or uh, if we guess correctly, uh, the output is going to be uh, that this this number was correct. We have we have won the game. But this is a very simplistic simplistic number guessing game, of course. Now, the next thing to to uh, start to think about is um, what's wrong with this number game? Well, you might say, well, there is nothing wrong with the game. It does work. And yeah, it does work. Although it's a bit tedious because you have to run this code all over again for each guess. So if we look at it once more. So. When I run the, run this uh, this all of this code when I run it once, um, it's going to ask me for one guess of a number, and if I get it incorrect, it's going to say, "Okay, please try again." But the program itself is not asking me for more input. So if I want to guess again, I have to go back to this code and run it once more. So, and I have to do, do this uh, as, as many times um, as I feel that playing this game is, 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 um, is fun or beneficial or uh, wh whatever is the reason for me playing this game. So uh, for each of these guesses, I have to go, well, I have to go here in this code and press F5 or go to this uh, run menu and just uh, run it all over again. So that's one problem. The other example is we have no way really of calculating any score. So because I keep running the code uh, every time I want to take a guess, uh, this is not good. It's the game is not going to tell me at the end uh, how good of a guesser I was. So arguably, the less time you use in guessing, the, be the better you are at this game. So basically what this is, this is trying uh, to introduce us to is the thought of what if we could just repeat this game until we find the correct number. And also at some point, what if there was a way of keeping score as well? But more, more, more on that later on. So if we improve this number guessing game, um, the idea here is illustrated on this on this slide, but I will just type it into the source code as well. Um, so what you might do is you might add uh, well or move all of this code, all of the code that does the guessing work for us basically. What we might do is we might wrap it in inside a repetition block like that. And um, we're, go we're going to go into how this this repetition works, uh, repetition block works in a second. But um, for now, let's just do the minimum modifications to this so that it works so I can demonstrate exactly how this, this works now. OK, so basically what we add is two lines. They are represented in red. So this while true in the beginning. And 
this break keyword somewhere in the middle. OK, so now if I run this program, uh, this should be considerably improved. So now what the number guessing game does here at the bottom, it's going to ask me to guess for a number. And uh, when I press enter, it's going to evaluate this, this uh, my, my guess. And if it is indeed still incorrect, as we have specified the correct guess, guess value here to being the number two, it's going to um, keep asking me for another number. So if I go all the way down from 10, I'm going to key, uh, I'm go uh, the program is going to ask me to keep guessing until I get finally, until I finally get this guess right. And when I get this guess right, so I'm going to just try with, with number two right now, um, I get a dif different message displayed saying, instead of saying incorrect, please try again. Uh, the message now says correct, you win the game. And also uh, you can see, as you can he see here from this, this prompt here, this input, what, what this uh, interpreter is uh, giving me, uh, it's no longer asking for input. So we also, this, the execution of this program also stopped at this point. This is because I added this, this keyword break to indicate that this is where we want to end the game. So that's more or less the idea. We want to repeat something for an unknown amount of times uh, until we meet some, some end condition. And we did this with this, these two lines of code, this break over here and this while true over here. So to look at how that actually works. Um, so while that we added on top is a, it's what is called a loop structure. So this tells the program to keep on uh, basically repeating itself and how you're supposed to read this is um, you, the program repeats itself while some condition is true. Uh, break is a keyword that, well, it breaks this, this loop structure. It, it breaks uh, the repetition. It uh, stops the repetition from, from happening. And that's why it's uh, aptly named break. And all it does to the previous example really is, is these two new lines of code. So briefly on the loop structures in the Python programming language. So repetition structures like, like the while are more commonly called loops. Uh, basically because you can um, probably imagine a repetition as, a, as um, a loop of doing something. So imagine we have the program that's going to that's going to flow somehow and make a loop and then it's going to continue doing its thing while well my loops are not very rounded but you get the point. Uh, so while this probably is not the best representation of while it's while it's called a loop that just happens to be what we what we call the repetition structures uh, normally so there happens to be two different and distinct looping structures in python one of them is called while and the other one is called for and we already saw the while loop in action um, so the difference between these is, um, well, um, the formal definition is here. Uh, so while is always used with some kind of a condition, and it's very similar to the if statement. So an if statement is saying um, if some condition exists or if some condition is true, then we uh, execute the following line of code. 
Uh, while is similar, so it's saying uh, while some condition is true, while some condition exists, we are going to repeat this line of code as many times as possible. In human terms, you might, for example, think of this as saying something like um, while it's hot outside, you must remember to drink fluids. So the emphasis here being on, on this word while. The for loop is slightly different. Um, the for is used for going through collections of things. Now we will get to what these collections of things are in a moment and actually in more detail later on in, in upcoming lessons. But um, the one thing to remember here is that this, this is how the for loop works in Python. It's actually not the way most for loops in most programming languages work. So this is something to remember. This is how it works in Python and it's how it works in Python only pretty much. So if you have experience from some other programming language, this is going to be uh, slightly different. Anyway, uh, for uh, Python's for, um, what for is used for basically um, in human terms, you might say something like um, for each number between one and ten uh, in order to count to ten. So here the em emphasis, well, not really on four, but um, for these um, for each or for each number even. But um, we're going to look at the while while statement first and then come back to four because while is the easier of the two. Well, at least in the beginning. Um, informally, it might be said that um, if you don't know exactly how many times you need to repeat a line of code, so you don't know exactly how many uh, times your loop loop goes over, then you uh, you should use while. If you can put a specific number for your repetition, uh, so for example, you you might say, okay, I know that this is going to take exactly ten rounds, or you know that um, it's going to be the 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 number of rounds is going to be a multiple of five or something like that. If you can put a numeric value on it, then probably you you what the loop structure you want is actually four. But again, uh, we're going to come back to both of these both of these loop structures and look at them in detail. But that's uh, just the high level high level uh, definitions and uh, use cases that they might have. So let's start with while. So while is the simpler of the two loop structures. Well, simple simpler is probably an over exaggeration because um, well, neither of them is really difficult. It's just that um, a while loop requires uh, a few fewer words when when you are typing the code. So maybe that's the way it's simpler, but um, conceptually they are they are both uh, equally difficult. But anyway, um, so the structure is really similar to an if. So imagine we have a line of program code like here. Uh, let's say this um, line of code would be uh, on a government website or maybe uh, something like uh, pension fund funds or whatever, and we are calculating a, a person's uh, eligibility for for getting uh, for getting a pension, and then you might have a condition as to like. Um, the pension can only be calculated um, if the su subject, um, if the subject is uh, is um, older than than 65 years old. That happens to be the um, retirement age in Finland at the moment. Um, and of course, if I'm paying attention, this um, age probably should be. Um, higher than 65, not not below 65, so that way around. Um, but anyway, um, 
that's just a small small detail. So you might say something like, okay, while a person's age, well, actually, yeah, that's, mm, it turned out it was the correct way uh, originally like that. Yeah. So, yeah. So now that I remember what this, or what, what this example is about, it's a while, so while someone is below the age of 65, uh, they are not eligible for pension yet. Um, another example of this, uh, we might do something simple. Uh, we might start out with something simple like counting from uh, 0 to, to 5 or 0 to 10 or whatever. Uh, we could probably do this as, a, as an example right now to illustrate exactly how the, how the while loop works. So um, here's the number guessing game. I'm just going to uh, get rid of it real soon like this. So oh, let's start with this. Um, example and let's say we're counting from 1 to 10. OK, so what is the algorithm for, for counting from from 1 to 10? Well, you have to start from somewhere, right? So let's start counting from 1 and why we're counting from 1 and not from 0 like in this example. Well, uh, because the well, humans tend to count starting from one, and machines tend to count from start, starting from zero. But since this is a human-oriented example, I'm just going to start from one, and um, then I'm going to say, okay, while this number is um, Well, the number is smaller than um, 11, because of course you will remember that um, this smaller smaller than sign is, is, is going to give us numbers that are all the way up to 10. Um, I could of course write it um, as um, smaller or equal to 10. Either way, either way works. And uh, then we might actually print the, the digits on screen. So we're going to print this number. And finally, uh, increment this, this va value that this variable in, in number has. So we're going to do number is number plus one. Here we are. So this should increase the value in, in this number variable. And once it reaches a certain condition, here it's set to four, uh, here it's set to 10, uh, the loop should stop at some point. So let's try this out if it actually counts from one to 10. Run this code, and we can see this uh, seems to work. So we start from one, go and go all the way up to ten, and we are just printing numbers. And this works more or less as expected. So the while is not a really really complicated structure in any way. One of the things uh, to remember from this is that. Um, much like the if statement, um, we do need some condition here. And in this loop, it's even more important than in the um, in, in the conditional statement that we do have this this state uh, condition here because that's the end statement for our or the ending condition for our loop. So while the, uh, this um, sentence here signifies that while uh, this variable number has a value that's lower or equal to 10, that means that um, uh, when number does reach 10 or uh, 
or, or something bigger, uh, this loop will stop. And um, the thing why this is important is um, if we don't specify this, this end condition well, it means that this loop can actually continue uh, repeating itself indefinitely. So there is there are actually ways to make what are called infinite loops. So it's rather important to remember to make this make this end condition happen at some point. Uh, equally important here is to actually address this this um, end condition. So here this last line increments this variable that contains our uh, the variable from our um, ending condition. So if we didn't do this, then the value in within number would never change. And again, this this loop would continue to spin indefinitely because again, we have we would have had specified the end condition uh, poorly. And um, this uh, loop would never meet its end condition. Actually, if you want, I can demonstrate what would happen. So um, let's say we forget to completely write this last line of code. So what we're only saying is uh, while number is smaller than smaller or equal to 10, then we want to print um, that that variable number. OK, what happens if we just uh, don't specify this end condition at all? Well, we have specified an end condition, but um, we know that this variable is not going to reach values of, of 10 or more. So this is never going to end. And if we then run this code, it will actually start running here in the interpreter uh, for good. You can see it's, it's there's some some blinking here. And that's because, um, well, if we look at how many lines of, of print this program has produced, it's it's quite many. So there are quite quite a few lines that the program printed because um, it keeps doing the same thing. It repeats this uh, repeats this one line printing this one number uh, until it meets the end condition. And of course, because this end condition was poorly poorly designed, then it, it never met the end condition, and as a result, the program stayed here printing that one number indefinitely. If you're wondering, by the way, how so? How did I uh, get the program to actually stop? You can see it has stopped, so it has stopped running. So uh, the thing here is that in this interpreter window, if you hit um, Control and C, so the Control button on the on your keyboard and C. Uh, that is basically a way of stopping a runaway program from executing. So that's uh, like a panic button that you can use. And that produces this this uh, red error here that says um, there was an error and that error was a keyboard interrupt. Uh, that keyboard interrupt comes from me pressing that that panic button or panic um, keyboard shortcut control plus C. Uh, anyway, so that is just to illustrate what happens if we have um, if we are not paying attention with uh, when our loop ends or uh, not making sure that that end condition will ever actually become true. And once we have this this um, end condition covered like here we can again run this once and you can see it only only counts, counts from one up to up to 10 and this um, program only takes 10 rounds to run and it will end at some point okay so more on these end conditions and this is just because it's important to have that end condition and to make sure it's well designed. So the while loop will keep repeating that code uh, inside 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 it. So it will keep repeating the following code block as long as that condition you have set is true. It's quite important to make uh, sure 
that the loop does have an ending condition because otherwise it will continue forever. The computer will uh, run that piece of code forever unless you actually manually stop it. And another point uh, similar to the if statement, you can also add more than just one condition by using the AND keyword. Uh, I don't think I have any examples of this uh, here, but um, it's just something to keep in mind. So if you want, if you want, you can specify multiple conditions uh, by using and that works the same way as, as demonstrated last week uh, using this this end keyword. So in that case, all the given conditions need to be true for the for the loop to continue. So if you have multiple conditions, uh, remember that the loop ends if one of those those conditions uh, is suddenly not true. So coming back to this number guessing game example, I used a special word break. Uh, to get out of that the loop that that we had, so I didn't really specify the end condition, and I just said that this the, the end condition is really important. So what's up with that? So it turns out there is more than just one way of writing the same loop. So sometimes we just want uh, another way to control uh, the end condition of of that loop, and. Um, a break is a special keyword that can be used to break out of a loop as well. So um, in addition to having specified that end condition, you can also use uh, this, this keyword break. So to demonstrate what the break does um, really uh, in a really simple way, um, if I added um, a break statement at the end of this this um, code block here and then I would run this program um, basically it would stop uh, this is now going to stop counting from 1 to 10 instead well let's see what it does if I run it now uh, instead it counts uh, to 1 so how, how is it doing that or why is it doing that now? Well, uh, this, this sort of while structure is still very, um, you can do this. And uh, basically what this break uh, keyword at the end now means is um, uh, the break is used to break out of this loop. So whenever uh, we encounter the break word here, we exit the loop. and of course, because we have only just started, and this is here at the end of this, these, these three state, statements, um, the loop will only uh, go around for one. Uh, the, the loop will, this loop, this block will only execute once. Maybe to better illustrate how it would, would work uh, is to, um, so once again, just to refresh your memory, uh, this is what it should do. So it should count from one to 10. So maybe we should add um, some other condition at the end of the code. So let's see, we, we, could, we can use a, a while uh, repetition structure together with a, with, an, um, with a conditional statement like the if. So let's say that uh, we wanted to break out earlier than what our end condition is, is specifying here. So if our number is, for example, uh, let's say we want it to end at, at five, so halfway. So at the end of this, this um, loop block here, we just see with this if sta statement, if the value in number is going to be equal to five, and at that point we want to use the break. So instead of just having the break at the end of end here, which will prevent the loop from running once, let's have it inside this if statement here and let the break come when number hits the value of five. So now if I run this code, you can see it counts from one to four. 
so well you can see now that break uh, is, is also used to end this loop uh, originally this loop should stop at uh, 10 but with break we have forced it to uh, cut cut its execution a bit short I guess the only thing uh, to note here is see how it actually stops um, the numbers here stop at four even though we specified the end condition here to be five uh, so if you read this line after line you probably figure you can probably figure out what's going on so uh, we are first printing the value of this number so for example printing this line of one or this line of two or three or four and only then we are incrementing its value so one uh, number has has um, been increased all the way up to five that's where where we go inside this this uh, if statement and break out of the loop. So then, because at that point we're breaking out of the loop, uh, we're not going to repeat these these steps anymore. So that's why the last number that has been printed on the previous time has actually been four. Um, if I wanted to change this, I could of course put the um, this print and um, increment in this number variable. Uh, with this if st uh, statement, switch their switch them around so that this if actually becomes before uh, before printing and before incrementing. This will now change uh, the number of times this loop is allowed to run. So if I run it now, ah, actually, yeah, I did it wrong once more. So um, I meant to say, of course that if we switch the order of ex execution from um, like this, so we're first printing the value of the number, then we're seeing if the value of, the no of that number is five, and only, af only as, a, as the last step, we're incrementing the uh, value of the, of the variable. Okay, let's see if it will now count all the way up to five, which it does. Uh, so I guess the, the takeaway from this example is sometimes it's a bit hard uh, to see how many times this this um, repetition is going to happen. As you could see, it's, it, it was even hard for me to, to figure out how many times it was going to do that. In my defense, I am I am talking while I'm, I'm coding this example, so um, maybe that took away some of the. Um, some of the um, brain power that I, uh, <laughs> I I meant to use in in making this example anyway um, to move on so yeah we um looked at this already so the break is the special keyword that can be used uh, to break out of a loop uh, so if and uh, there is a typo there as well so if an ending condition is done using break it's no longer compulsory to define an end condition in the while statement well that's not technically true it's never compulsory to define uh, an end uh, condition for your while statement uh, it's just really good form to do that so uh, it's a matter of good coding style uh, sometimes you don't want an end statement because you actually do want the loop to continue infinitely or indefinitely uh, usually, it, it, it is uh, important to define some in ending condition at some point. Um, what else? So, then we also have this um, in this example. Um, we have this kind of um, while statement uh, where inside of the of the condition of the end condition there is just simply uh, true uh, so what's this about um, 
So basically here, if we go back to our, our demo. So in that example, uh, this end condition was replaced just by, by this uh, word true. So this basically has um, one, one meaning. It's um, we don't want to specify the end condition here at the beginning of the loop. And what, what true does, it just, um, it's just a filler word inside to make uh, this loop uh, basically go on forever. And this is the uh, this is the situation where we really need um, to specify for some some end condition inside the loop using using for example one of these one of these if statements. So if you notice if I change this uh, Okay, let's go back. If I change this end condition, uh, I just remove it and put true in instead and um, run this piece of code once more. You will see that the actual um, function of, of this code didn't change. So it's still counting from one to five. However, now that there is no end condition here, if I was to remove uh, this this if statement from the uh, from from the middle here, so now we have no end condition in in the if statement, no break either, and we run this program. Uh, this is going to run forever again. So well, not forever, but indefinitely. As you can see, the numbers uh, keep keep incrementing. And this will go on for a, a good while. So unless you stop it, you can you're, you start to get numbers in the millions or or something. So that's again just to remind of the importance of uh, an ending condition here or at least inside the loop. And basically, again, it's. Um, a bit interchangeable as um, if you if you want to do the ending condition here to begin with, or if you want to set some some end condition inside the loop using using an if statement and a break. Um, all up to you, depending a bit on the circumstances. Um, either way might be might be good or beneficial to know. So. Once more, coming back to the number guessing game. So now that we know how the while loop works, could we improve the number guessing game uh, even more? So what if we implemented some sort of um, score using this, this while loop? So we're going to do that basically by setting a maximum number of tries that a player is allowed to have. And we're just going to set that to six and we're just going to modify this loop so that um, the game is only going to be on while we have. While we have tries left. And. Um, we're also going to make a line of code here that basically just takes one try um, out of maximum number. So on the first run, for instance, um, six mi minus one is going to be five. So you have five um, guesses left. Otherwise, the code is not going to be very different. Uh, there is going to be a break statement at the end when we uh, win the game and otherwise let's just see how how this code would work or how code will work okay so there's this demo i'm going to uh, get rid of it here like this and then we have this um, number guessing game once again uh, Uh, okay, 
So with this number guessing game, we wanted to set the number of, of tries that are left or well, a, tr a number of, of determined tries for the player, how many times they are allowed to guess. We're going to set that to six initially and uh, to change the end condition of this loop. Uh, we're going to need uh, while there are some tries left. And while uh, so while tries left is. And or, or greater than zero, right? Because this will keep us running while there are some tries left. And the first thing we want to do is decrement that that number. So tries left is tries left minus one. Okay, so basically, let's see how this works now. Um, Well, actually, let's um, do one more modification. Uh, let's add to this print the number of tries we actually have left. Uh, so let's do you. You have. Um, tries left. Um, you have tries left left so this should print the number inside this variable and then it's going to be um, actually yeah you mm, can't do that okay here we are Here we are. Okay. Let's see if this works or if I have to re re uh, furbish this a little bit. But basically, it just says you have a um, number of tries left, and then it asks us to asks us to take a guess. OK, so now the number guessing se game says we have some number of uh, tries left. Uh, we could have specified here that it's uh, guess guesses that are left. Here we are. Let's do this once more. Here we are. So we have now five guesses left. We guess a number, let's go for nine. And you can see this, this value of guesses keeps getting smaller and smaller once we have uh, incorrect, incorrect guesses. And the interesting part here is what happens when we go down to just one guess. So if we do one more incorrect guess, um, Um, let's see, did this work correct? It did, in fact. So, uh, well, this didn't work exactly as I intended. Um, I think we, we should modify the numbers so that, so that this act actually works. So it's only five guesses. So that's now actually six guesses because again, um, the computer actually starts to calculation from from zero. So if we go down from six uh, to one, that's actually going to be uh, going to be six six uh, guesses and not not five. But more or less, uh, you can you can see how this was supposed to work. 
So we only have an, uh, inf uh, a finite number of guesses. And um, at some point we either win the game and we break out of this loop or uh, this uh, game ends because we have used up all of the all of the tries that we have. So let's uh, for for good measure just modify this this one value. So let's say if tries left this is larger than one. Uh, if this would now get us the correct number of number of uh, guesses, let's see again. So that's five guesses left. Um, four, three, two, one, and then it ends. Okay, now the math mathematics make makes uh, some sense. Um, and of course, if we were to modify the winning condition a bit, uh, So, we could say here um, that if, if we win, uh, let's say we could print our uh, number of number of tries that it took to guess the number correctly. So you guessed it. We with only, and then we have to do a little bit of math. So if we start with um, C, we then immediately subtract one out of it. So in the beginning, there is going to be go, going to be just five guesses. So. If we start from five and then we have the tries left, that should, um, or sorry, you start with six and then we have the tries left. So what if we tried uh, to do six minus however six minus however many tries there are left? So we're gonna say. Uh, Let's see if this this will work. So we're saying something like you guessed it only with um, five five guesses, uh, and they are going to be guesses remaining. Uh, actually, here we need to say um, hang on, it's not going to be five guesses guesses remaining because it's a it's a um, yeah, so, okay, so if um, we start with one and uh, then we sub subtract whatever the tries left is, that should give us the number of guesses it took us to get uh, this far, I think. Well, let's let's figure it out. Well, one of the best things about programming is, of course, we can do the code and then just test it right here. So uh, we have five guesses left. Uh, let's guess a number. If the number was, uh, we know the number correct number is two, so we might just uh, try to win the game straight up. So it says, OK, correct, you win the game and you guessed it only with one guess. Uh, you used only one guess for it. OK. And if we do the same with, um, OK, let's guess it incorrectly once and then correctly another time. It's going to say you guessed it only with two guesses. So it's um, it's sort of counting a score for us. Well, obviously, the lower lower this number is going to be, the, the better. And it, and it sort of works as well. So this is more or less the idea, idea that we are we're trying to get to. So uh, 
a little bit better improved uh, control of how many times we have been in this in this loop and um, when this execution of this code block is actually going to end. OK, so that's uh, the much improved number guessing game. Then I think it is time to go for uh, and look at the for loop, the other type of, of uh, repetition block that exists. So as I mentioned briefly already, for loops are uh, to go through some collection of items. So it's different to a while loop in that it's not meant to repeat after uh, just one after another. It's meant to go through so, some collection. Now, what collections exactly are? Well, a few examples of what are collections. So if you have a string of text or a word, well, that's a collection of individual letters. So for example, the word help uh, consists of the in individual letters H, E, L, and P. The other type of collection we might have, and this is what we're going to use to demonstrate a lot of lot of stuff with the for loop, is actually a, a collection of numbers. So one of the things you can do, you can specify, for example, uh, a collection of numbers from one to ten. This is done using a command called range. Actually, we will come back to this very shortly. Uh, the syntax for the for loop is not too complicated. So you start off with this for keyword. Then uh, what follows is a variable name followed by uh, this keyword in followed by some collection. So this really, while it's a bit verbose, it's really not very, very uh, complicated. So if we try this out in practice, um, just going to get rid of our number guessing game real quickly here. Here, right. So let's say we uh, just repeat this example from the from the uh, slide. Uh, we have some collection that here happens to be a collection of letters because that's how we define um, a word. A word is a collection of letters. We might then say, OK, so for uh, each letter in this word, we want to do something for each of these letters. And to, to start off, let's just print um, print each of these letters. So notice that letter here uh, is a variable name that we assign for each item in the collection uh, that's specified here. So here, word is a collection uh, of so word is a, is a collection of uh, so word is a, is literally a word and words are a collection of letters. So each individual letter, it's going to be this uh, this letter, this individual letter, that individual letter, that individual letter, and so on and so on. So we're just going to print each of these letters individually to demonstrate how this for loop works. So I'm just going to save the code and run run it. So you can see uh, we're printing uh, lines of text, but just printing one individual letter on each line. And that's generally the idea of how the for loop works. We're specifying that we want uh, to print, uh, we want uh, to get items from a collection one at a time and do something for them. So that loop would be written to say, for example, for, for this, this uh, for each letter from this uh, word or from each item in this in this collection. Now, maybe instead of 
just uh, letters in a word. Now that's an easy, easy example, but it may be a bit misleading as to what it is. So maybe numbers is the other other way to think of this. So uh, in Python there exists a command called range. And range is a command that's used to create a collection of numbers. So for example, uh, typing a range 10 gives you numbers from 0 to 9. So it's the first uh, 10 numbers uh, up from zero. And there is a way of different uh, way, uh, different ways to use range. We're not going to go uh, too deeply in, into that, but let's say we want the first. Uh, we would want the first 10, 10 uh, digits, first 10 numbers, uh, and we would want to start from one. We would specify that as saying uh, it's re a range from 1 to 11. How you re read this range uh, command is actually um, uh, range just specifies that this is going to be uh, a collection of something and the first parameter you give it is uh, the start point. The start point is always included in the range and then uh, the second parameter it's, is the end point and the end point is never uh, included in the in the range. And if you only uh, specify one parameter in this in this uh, command, then it means um, it's going to start from zero and end where you specified. Then there is some clever some clever ways to just get um, every other item uh, in this in this range, or maybe you want to put numbers uh, from from uh, from ten to one, but backwards. Uh, then you would uh, specify. Uh, the, the, this range in in uh, in reverse order like this. Uh, the examples are on the in in the theory. You can look them up later. But basically, to go through a collection of numbers, uh, we could use the for loop together with this range command. So, as an example. Let's just do what's what's um, there. So um, this is an example on range. So we might say for number in range, and if we want the first uh, ten numbers, so from uh, so from one to ten, we would specify that we want to start from one, and um, the last number that we don't include is going to be eleven. So that gives us numbers from one to ten. And then we just simply print them in the console. And if I run this program, you will see that um, it indeed does count from from one to ten, much like the uh, pre, pre, uh, one of the previous examples. But now there is only two lines of code, albeit this this first line here for number in range is a bit more complicated, but um, once you get used to this uh, syntax, it's not really complicated. Uh, then, of course, uh, the for loop works pretty much the same way as it does with, with the while loop. Um, the for loop works pretty much in the same way as the, uh, as the while loop does. So uh, it for example, you could use uh, the break keyword with the for loop as well. So let's say for some reason in our example where we're again counting from 1 to 10, we wanted to stop earlier, we could use um, an if and, and a break together uh, to stop earlier than we initially wanted. We could do that. So here we would say if the number uh, if we want to stop at number five, we break. So this would actually again give us uh, the first four numbers. And if it's not num, uh, if, if it's not number five, uh, we just proceed uh, to the next next uh, line of code here. So this should give us the first four numbers, as you can see. Uh, there is also another keyword which can be used for controlling the execution of a loop. Uh, that's what's called continue. So continue is like break, except it's a command that doesn't stop the loop. 
it just makes it move for, forward uh, to the next round. So it can be used when we want to move on with the loop and skip the rest of the code uh, within this, this same uh, block of code. So let's again consider this, this uh, the, the numbers between 1 and 10. And actually, let's do something simpler than just this, uh, than this shown here. Uh, instead of printing all, let's revert back to uh, from 1 to 10 and instead of counting every number from 1 to 10 let's count every other number uh, let's just print uh, numbers that are even so to do that we might um, skip all the numbers that are that are that are not even so uh, uh, so so we might uh, check it first with an if statement. So let's say if the number is, is even. So the way to check if a number is even, I'm not sure if, uh, I'm pretty sure this was in one of the tasks earlier, but um, basically you, um, what you do is you, you divide your no number with two and see if the remainder is um, equal to zero. So, uh, so if you try to divide something by two and you get something something uh, as a remainder, you know it was not uh, divisible by two. Therefore, it's not a not a um, not an even number. So only if it's divisible by two like so, we print it, and in um, in the other case, we uh, continue with executing this loop. So let's see if this, this will work. So as you can see, uh, all the numbers that are now divisible by 2, so 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, uh, only those were printed, and for all the others, well, this, this program, this loop, jumped well we jumped over them within within this loop using this uh, continue continue word actually this is a bit of a bad example because um well it, it turns out we don't actually need this this else part here um, because if the only criteria here is uh, we're saying if our number uh, div divided by two uh, leaves no remainder so if our number is divisible by two we only then print the number uh, we don't actually need the else part in this in this uh, conditional statement uh, just leaving it out will do the same thing but um, maybe uh, some of the examples on in the in the theory uh, illustrate better what to what to use continue for well, anyway, uh, you can see these work pretty much the same way. So um, we have these two alternative code paths. So in case number is not divisible by two, we just continue with this with this loop. Uh, finally, there is a very specific thing uh, that works in Python and, and doesn't work in, in most programming languages. Uh, so this is again something that's very peculiar to Python and Python only. So in Python you can also uh, put a, uh, connect an else block to a loop structure. So this is similar to uh, when you connect an else block uh, to, an, to an if statement. This at first may seem counterintuitive, but it does have a very use. So the else attached to a loop is executed after the loop has finished, unless the loop exited with break. So as an example, uh, we could take our number guessing game once more. Um, while we first get rid of this this example here and um, we have the number guessing game here okay 
let's see if we can still improve the number guessing game a little bit. Wrong button. And uncomment region. There we are. Uh, so as you remember how this worked, uh, it is now this number guessing game is counting the amount of guesses that you have. So if I keep guessing and if I keep guessing incorrectly, I'm just going to run out of uh, guesses, but uh, the program doesn't really tell anything about why uh, it, it stopped now. Well, it does say we have we uh, don't have guesses left, but well, it does we say on the previous go that we only have one guess left. Uh, but after we have run out of guesses, maybe there is something else we can do. And that's when we could use this this um, else block together with a with a repetition block. So again, uh, this else attached to a loop struct is always run after the loop has finished uh, unless it exited with break. So with this, we basically uh, know uh, the keyword being here exited with break. So basically uh, we know if we went here, so if we made the correct guess and we ended up with this break here, uh, then uh, we know that we are going to exit this loop and then we have succe successfully played a round of this game. Uh, if we attached an else part to this to this while structure, so notice now I am putting this else on the same level of, of where, where this while is, so this while is now uh, in parallel to this else. So again, uh, the condition in which we go to this else block, so uh, is um, we go to this else block after the loop has finished, and only if the uh, and and we don't only if the loop uh, doesn't exit with break. So if we end up here, we know that we haven't. Um, come through this break here and therefore we haven't actually we haven't uh, managed to finish the game by guessing guessing the number correctly so what we could do here is indicate that um, that the player simply has run out of guesses and uh, let's see if it works here. So again, if um, if I just um, guess something uh, to begin with, uh, the game is still counting guesses, right? And if I guess correctly and win the game, it's going to say you guessed it only with 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 two guesses, which is correct in this case. In this case, okay, right. So what happens if I don't finish the game uh, using this 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 uh, victory victory path here? Uh, so let's just say I'm going to keep guessing and run uh, run out of guesses right now. So what will happen is uh, that now we we move on to this else uh, part here. So. On the first run, because we ended up uh, here within this this code block, because this was the condition for for uh, hitting this this break, then we only get this this uh, winning message here saying correct, you win the game. Uh, if we never reach this break, then we end up with this L else, and uh, that's now beneficial because we know we have exited this loop and we have but never we have never uh, met we have we have never uh, been across paths with with this break 
and that's how we know that we actually uh, ran out of guesses because the um, ending condition for the loop was that while there are some some guesses left, you are only then you are allowed to to make new guesses. So as you can see, only if if we guess correctly, uh, we get the we, we get the winning message, and only if we uh, run out of guesses, we get this get get this um uh, you have run out of guesses message at the end. And um, similarly, you could use an else block together uh, with, with, a, with a for loop as well. Uh, the type of loop does not matter for this. Uh, there is an example in the in the theory section in the under lesson five where this is illustrated uh, in a bit uh, more using a bit more complicated example. But this is more or less the general idea of of what this else else block and the other uh, control structures with with loops, how they work in Python. Uh, I believe that is the last example of the day. So I'm just going to turn off the recording in case uh, anyone who is attending uh, want to chat a bit more about this.